Starting a new Scrum team can be a challenge. New roles and new processes. Not everyone sees this new change or contributes the same way. In this video, we'll learn how to better align people to key agile roles in Scrum, like Scrum Master and Product Owner, and how to better understand and get the best out of each individual in your team ceremonies and also ultimately better align the team to action that will drive results faster. For the latest Agile trends and tips and how to get individuals to change together by aligning to a common outcome that will get to action and drive results faster, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified when I post a new video. Stewart and I'm an Agile coach who focuses on helping individuals and teams through complex change by better understanding how each can best lead and contribute to make a positive impact that will drive successful outcomes. So let's face it, all the skills in the world will not solve for getting the best out of people if you don't truly know how they want to contribute. Our first section, we're going to cover the Scrum roles. I'm going to focus on Scrum Master and Product Owner in this scenario. I'm not going to go through each one of these. This will be available for you to download. I just wanted to drive home to the point that it's not a one size fits all and there's different ways that people are wanting to come to the table and contribute where they really truly want to put their energy. Now the GC index allows that ability to measure individuals' impacts. We call these proclivities. There's five of them. I'm gonna give you an example of Scrum Master. We'll do two of them for uh, this conversation. Playmaker. You ever wonder why a Scrum Master does not focus a lot of energy on team building activities or really trying to get the team to collaborate more? There might be a direct correlation with their natural inclination to want to do it, or they might be really drained at even doing the activity. It's not somewhere they naturally go. A playmaker is all about that. They will want to get the team from that Tuckman model of forming to performing and really focus on creating team building activities and finding ways to help the team work better. Let's look at the polisher. Now a scrum master that has high inclinations as a polisher is going to focus on quality and continuous improvement. This is where you'll see in retrospectives or anything that the team's doing is all about the possibilities and ways to improve. They're looking at quality, making sure that we do the right things. Uh, think about also in process. A product owner with a high inclination as a strategist is really going to help the team understand where they're going, what's the product vision, and giving them direction of the what, right? What are we doing? What are we building? And why is it important? What's the benefit? What are we solving for? They are going to help make sense for the team. A game changer product owner with high inclinations in this area comes to the table with original ideas. They do not have fear of experimentation. They look at creative ways to innovate, innovate and building products that could disrupt the market is a very natural state for them, right? They want to differentiate. This is a quick example of, again, one size doesn't fits all and not everyone comes to the table the same way. This is a very interesting topic when it comes to hiring a Scrum Master, uh, figuring out who will be on these roles on a team, and then also developing them. You can help them build all the skill sets in the world, but if they don't naturally really want and spend the energy in those particular skill set 
development pieces, is it really worth the time for you or for them? All right, I'm not gonna go through each one of these Scrum events, but just highlight uh, examples of why this is different for everyone based on their different ways that they're going to contribute. But let's look at a couple examples. Sprint planning. We have a playmaker, somebody that has a natural inclination as a playmaker. Again, remember, this is people focus. They're gonna want to make sure that everyone's comfortable uh, with committing to all the stories. That is going to be their focus, is about the people and how they feel or getting them to collaborate during this event. Somebody that is a strategist in sprint planning is going to be looking at more of the strategy on getting the stories done in that sprint. A game changer, on the other hand, is going to find another way to get it done and they're gonna say, hey, let's experiment this sprint, right? That might be coming out of their, their mouths, right? They're really open to doing something new and something different, right? They challenge that status quo. A polisher is focusing on making sure that we're validating the work, right? Doing it right. And lastly, the implementer. They are gonna be very driven to action and wanting to get that event done. So they're very focused on, hey, let's focus, let's get things done. What are the tasks that we have to do? Now, let's look at the sprint rec retrospective. And this will be my last example. So let's run through it. Strategist, sprint retrospective. They're gonna say, I see we're always dependent on other teams. Let's start planning for that, right? They're looking at uh, systems thinking, the patterns, the connections, right? They're very strategic um, in that mindset game changer that's going to be a little bit different right they're going to be thinking about what's the harm to try something new if it doesn't work in the next two weeks we just won't continue doing it right they have that very natural experimentation and very open to change now let's look at the playmaker remember all about people they are going to say Let's try an icebreaker, right? Get some team building activities so we know each other better. What do you think? Why don't we try something anonymous so we can make sure everyone's voice is heard? So here is just a quick snapshot of, even in our Scrum events, depending on the team members that you have, how they're gonna show up, and how, what their natural inclinations on how to best contribute as a team. So here's the question, what agile changes are you having in becoming an effective scrum team today? I would love to hear from you. So comment below and let me know. Okay, so our last section is going to share three types of scenarios on what it would look like in an aggregated profile of the, all the proclivities of the team members on a team. This scenario is a team that is put together to build a new platform. But let's look at the polishers. Not a lot of inclination there, is there? So what could happen if you're building a new platform and there isn't anyone on the team or looking at collectively all the people on the team are really not going to be thinking about quality or building the right thing. They're more focused on getting it done. Can you see the challenges that you might run into uh, later on as this platform is delivered? Will you get a platform that is good quality? Will you have a team that would get feedback to ensure that they are building the right thing? Or should I say it better, will they care to really focus on that? When all they really wanna do is ensure that this gets done. This is why, depending on the outcome that you're trying to achieve, it is extremely important to know how to align people based on that. Scenario number two, 
This is a product team that is building a new product into the market and trying to differentiate themselves as a company. So here is the aggregate profile of every team member on this product team for their natural inclinations. Now again, I'm gonna repeat this. They are building a product trying to disrupt the market. Don't have a problem of them getting it done. You probably don't have a problem of them building it well, right? They're really focused on uh, ensuring that it looks good, but you might get a product that doesn't necessarily solve the problem of being innovated. That's not where their heads are at. What would you need to do to ensure to balance this team so you get the outcomes that you need. How well do you know your team to solve the problems that you have today? This is a production support team. This team was put together to provide production support for a product. Majority of the people that are on this team are game changers. Now, let's remember, the game changers are all about innovation, original ideas, and really wanting to experiment and do new things. What do you think might happen with this team after a while doing only production support work? Do you think that they would be happy continuing doing this or they start to get bored and deflated? How often have you experienced this at your organization where you have a group of individuals that have been put on production support and they start to become not as happy with the work that they do every day. What would you do differently if you were to align a team focusing on production support? Would you want to know if you could find more people that probably have more of an inclination of implementers and polishers and maybe not as a high focus of game changer? What would that look like for you in order to ensure that you are getting the best out of the people that you put on your teams. Think about it. If you wanna learn more about the Game Changing Agile Teams workshops, or if you wanna learn how to get a free GC Index consultation, go to ingeniousagile.com and click Contact Us. I will also provide this information in the video description as well. Tune in every Wednesday to learn more about Game Changing Agile. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and be sure to share it with your friends.